Okay, so in this video, I'm going to discuss one of the um, cost flow methods for valuing inventory. There are four different types of cost flow methods, and this is of chapter six, right? So you can value um, inventor inventory through four different types of cost flow methods. Um, we can use the specific identification cost flow method. We can use the um, first in, first out cost flow method. The last, that one is known as FIFO, the last in, first out cost flow method, which is LIFO, and the weighted average. So what do we mean by these cost flow methods? Well, when you sell an item from your store or merchandise, you must, you, you must um, record its cost, right? And that sounds pretty simple, but what happens when you have various um, items that are similar and you've purchased them at different prices um, so what what cost do you assign do you assign the cost of your most recent uh, purchase do you assign the cost of the last purchase uh, the first purchase you did um, or do you assign a, an average cost um, how do you or do you try to identify how much that particular um, item cost you right it um, it, it sounds um easy to assign uh the cost of the particular item until you think you know many of these stores have um thousands of the same items and they can distinguish them one from another and they've perhaps paid different prices from their suppliers for these items for example let's just say that uh, uh, a store sells tires and they have uh, thousands of one specific type of tire and they've purchased you know on january 1 they purchase 100 at 50 dollars and on january 10 they purchase uh in february let's say they purchase another 100 at 55 and in march they purchase another 100 at 60 so when they sell just one tire what um price or what cost are they going to assign to it are they going to sign um the 50 the 55 the 60 and average so that's what um that's what um, we're going to discuss here today. And the answer to that question is all of the above, right? Why all of the above? Well, not really all of the above, but as accountants, we have choices. We can, we can choose the cost flow that we're going to, um, that we're going to assign. Okay. We can say that, well, I'm going to assign it based on FIFO. Um, so based on when I sell that tire, uh, FIFO means first in, first out, so that means that I'm going to assign the um, first um, cost that I that I incurred, which in my example, which I, if I remember correctly, was 50, right? It went from 50 to 55 to 60, right? Or I can say I want to use LIFO, last in, first out. So in that case, I will use um, the the um, the last price that I paid, which would be 60. Uh, or you can say I'm going to use a weighted average, right? So if I pay 50, 55, and 60 for the same amount of tires, then the weighted average will be a 55, right? The average of the three. Um, or I can choose specific cost identification. Now, specific cost identification is only practical when you have... Um, when as a store you sell very unique items and very few unique items that you can identify their specific um, costs to the store and so you can assign a specific cost to them so some things that come to mind are perhaps a, a high-end um, uh, jewelry store right so each jewelry is very unique and each jewelry may you may be able to to assign well you probably are going to assign a specific cost to each jewelry because to each one is unique right um, maybe in the auto industry as a car dealer I've never been you know I've never worked in that industry but I would imagine that that could be possible too because each car is pretty unique even though they may be the same brand some they all come with different features and so forth and so on and because they're not you know a car dealer doesn't have thousands and thousands of items like a grocery store might so they might be able to um, assign their cost based on specific cost identification, okay?
So we're not going to discuss specific cost identification. We're going to discuss the other three. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, first in, first out, FIFO. Here, here, from here on, I might just say FIFO. Last in, first out, LIFO, and weighted average cost. So this exercise that I'm going to do right now is, is going to um, show you how to account uh, for inventory sales using the FIFO method, the first in, first out. And so I'm going to use exercise um, uh, problem series A, 61A. That one refers to the FIFO. And in that problem, those are on pages 308 and 309 of the, of the um, let's see what edition this is. This is the 13th edition of Financial and Managerial Accounting, Warren Reeve and Dushak. Okay, so on that page, if you want, you could turn to that page. You will notice that they give you this um, this information here, and they ask you to compute various things. Um, I'm not going to follow specifically the directions of uh, of the book. I'm I'm just going to show you the entries for the sales and the ending balances for for. Um, that we'll have in the different related accounts and it, it'll probably answer all the questions all the um questions that the that this exercise asks for um i've noticed that this exercise also has a show me how video so um you could go to that and see how they do it over there okay so um so this is the information they give me, and I'm supposed to account for the sale of these inventory using the first in, first out method. So I'm going to do it my own unique way. If you look at the answers from the book, you will notice that they use some sort of different type of, of template and different format of, you know, to to determine, you know, what cost of goods sold is going to be, what sales revenue is going to be, what inventory is going to be. I don't really care what format you use so long as you come up with the right answer whatever is easier for you perhaps one of one of you will will come one of you will come out with with a, a better system than what I'm going to show here um perhaps you'll see how the book does it and the answer of the book and you like it more um that really doesn't matter to me what matters is that you find you, you find a method that is that you feel comfortable with and that will um that you'll get the right answers with so this is how i feel comfortable doing this method what i do is i take every line where there's a sale because in that line i'm going to look backwards and that's how i'm going to assign my cost right so if i had a sale of three thousand seven fifty at 125 per unit that's 450 dollars that I brought in as sales revenue. So how am I going to cost this? Remember, this is first in, first out. So which layer am I going to use first? I'm going to use this layer first, right? Because this is my first layer. So that's the first layer that I'm going to cost. But you notice that this layer only has 2,500 units. So I'm going to have to go to this other layer here to get my remaining um items and cost them at 68 so 2500 will be costed at 60 and the remainder which should be 1250 if my math is correct will be costed at 68 and so what i like to do and i'm going to open this here and you'll see is i do a little line here so what does this little line do it shows me how I'm going to cost my different items. As I said, 2500 at $60. That's this layer, which is going to disappear. And at 68 1250 So I will sell the 3750 at 235000 which is a combination of the cost assigned to these two. It's a weighted average, right? I don't have it here. It's not necessary. You could do it if you want. So if I take uh, 235 and divide that by 3,750, that's going to be 62.67. That's the weighted average per unit price that you sold it at. But that's not really necessary, right? Because right here now you have the information to complete your first entry. 
when I've done these entries here, I've sort of blacked them out a little so that, um, you know, we could just pay attention to them once we do them. So let me show the entry here, right? So my cost of goods sold is going to be 235, which I determined using the first in first out method. That's what, that's the inventory value that you're going to lower. And of course, you're going to get your sales revenue from over here. And let's assume that it was all on credit. So accounts receivable is 450,000 and sales revenue 450,000. But then I like, so that I won't get confused because everything back here, you know, how do I know what I have left over, right? So I like to specifically move to a next step and say, well, this is how much I have remaining. Why? Because when I do this sale over here, all I want to look at is here, okay? This from here back is part of the past. It's over with. We did the entry that was related to that. Now we're going to go from here forward. Okay. So now we have another sale. And this sale is 1,250 at 120. Okay. And if you look up here, you have 6,250 remaining at 68. So there's only one price that you can assign to. Right. And you know you're going to assign $68. So let me click and open here. So I know I assigned $68 to my full $1,250 at $68 is $85. So cost of merchandise sold is going to be $85,000. And my sale is going to be $150,000. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here where I calculate my remaining inventory so that I won't get confused. And going forward, this is all that matters to me. The rest is part of history. Um, so if I had 6250 and I sold 1250 now I have 5000 remaining at $68. So here forward is all I need to pay attention to. And here I would use this information to create my other entry, right? So cost of merchandise sold is $85,000. That's an expense and it is going to have a debit balance. That is always offset with inventory because you sold inventory and it went down. Again, we're going to assume we sold this on credit. So it's going to be accounts receivable at 150 That was the sale, as you can see here, and sales revenue at 150 Okay. If it was not all sold on credit, all you would have is a cap combination of cash and accounts receivable, a total of 150 But let's just assume everything was sold on credit. Okay, so the idea here, as you can see, is we're going to always go with the first layer and then the second. In this case, we only have one layer, so we didn't have much more, um, you know, this wasn't that difficult, right? So now we also have one layer. It's going to be 5,000 at 68. So I know for sure that uh, my next cost of merchandise is going to be costed at, at $68 each, right? Because I don't have another layer. Um, so it says I had a sale of 500 A sale of 500 as I told you, the full 500 is going to be costed at 68 That's the only layer I have. And so anyways, it's, it's the first and only layer. So I'm going to cost the 500 at 68 My cost of goods sold is cost of merchandise sold or cost of goods sold, however you want to call it. It's 34000 And then I subtract the sale from what I had prior. And this is my remaining inventory at 4568 Okay. And so then we we're going to... Uh, so the entry for that is, again, very simple. We're going to have accounts receivable at 60000 and sales at 60000 which is, comes from here, right? That was the sale straight from the book. That's the answer. This is what we're calculating. This is what the exercise is most interested in seeing um, if you have the knowledge to come up with. And that's the cost of merchandise sold. And as you can see, we calculated for it to be 34000 So inventory is going to go down by $34,000. Okay, so let's um, let's move forward. So now we did a purchase of eighteen thousand um, uh, eighteen thousand units at seventy 
for 1000 to 60. So that purchase under a perpetual inventory system, you would simply book um, 70,000, uh, 1,260 worth of inventory, right? So inventory is an asset. So as an asset, you would debit it to increase it, right? And if you purchase it with cash, the cash goes down by this amount. If you purchase it through credit, accounts payable, a liability will go up. Accounts payable, liability go up with credit. So you would credit the accounts payable by 1000 to 60. But more importantly, um, what I like about this step is now it gives us two layers, right? Because FIFO or with only and LIFO with only one layer is very simple. I mean, you don't have another choice but to take from that layer. But once you have more than one layer, then you get to um, see how um, FIFO or LIFO or weighted average is, uh, is, is applied. Okay, so we have two layers here, and this is what we care about going forward. Layer one was my remaining inventory from from prior purchases and layer two is new purchases right one of them is is costed at sixty eight dollars per unit the other one at seven so now we're going to do this sale and we want to know um how we're going to cost them remember first in first out fifo this was the first in so this is the first out you're going to consume as much as you can from this once this goes down to zero in other words once you consume four thousand five hundred then you will consume um, the remainder of this one and if we look at and if i expand this here you can see that i cost it four thousand five hundred at 68 right i have the right number here i have the wrong number here so let me fix this cost it at 68 but in any case i i, I had the right number here so cost it at 68 was going to it's going to give me three hundred and six thousand and so I I I use four thousand five hundred in this layer. I I sold a total of nine thousand, so I have four thousand five hundred more to go, right? And that's going to be costed at this layer, the second one, which would be seventy. At seventy, a total cost is three fifteen. So my total cost of merchandise sold for the whole nine thousand is going to be six hundred and twenty one thousand, right? And what's going to be my remaining inventory so that I could move forward? Well, my remaining inventory is simply going to be the 18,000 minus the 4,500 that was taken away through this sale that was sold is going to leave me with 13,500 costed at $70. So this entry for this sale, we know that the sales revenue, let's just highlight this, uh, we know that sales revenue is going to be 1125000 as we see it here. And we know that cost, so that's going to be offset with accounts receivable. Uh, cost of merchandise sold is going to be 621000 as we calculated over here. And that is always um, a reduction in inventory, right? So now let's go to the next step. And the next step is another sale. And again, when, when we have only one sale and only one layer of inventory, then it's quite simple. It's quite obvious that I can only sell from one layer, which is costed at $70, $70 per unit, right? So it's quite obvious that the whole 8500 was sold at $70 per unit. And so my cost of goods sold is going to be 595 cost of merchandise sold. And my remaining inventory is going to be 13500 minus what I sold, 8500 is 5000 right? So you don't need this for your entry. This is just for going forward information. That's all I need that for. That, that's all I care. This is what you need for, to, for your entries, right? Sale of 1062500 which is given to you by the exercise. That's going to be sales revenue. It's going to be offset by accounts receivable, right? And cost of merchandise sold, five ninety-five. dollars Cost of merchandise sold is an expense. So that has a debit balance, right? Expenses increase with debits. And it's going to be offset with a lowering of inventory. And so there you have the entry, five ninety-five, dollars And... Um, inventory goes down 
by by 595 and sales revenue is 1 million 500 okay so now the exercise says that another purchase was made so now we have two layers and let's see how that affects um, it's always good to have two layers when you're explaining these as I said before because they're more interesting to explain okay so now we have two layers one was the previous the remaining inventory which was costed at 70 and a new layer which was purchased March 5 uh, at 15,000 which is costed at 7160 now this would require an entry I'm not showing you the entries here I do put them in the T accounts later on and I'll show you that okay um, so a purchase was made and so a sale of 10,000 was made on March 14 right so 5,000 is going to come out of here we deplete this layer and then we move on to the second layer of 15,000 where we use 5,000 more at 7160 so let's see if I did that correctly I opened this up and I see that I did 5,000 at 70 for a total cost of 350,000 and I costed another 5,000 from this layer at 7160 for a total cost of 358 so cost of merchandise sold is going to be 708 sales revenue is going to be 1250 and as we see here again very simple entry by now you, you should have it memorized accounts receivable of 1250 sales revenue of 1250 comes from the same place cost of merchandise which you merchandise sold which we calculated 708 and that reduces inventory okay so now we did another purchase here of 2500 at 72 dollars and then we subsequently sell um, 8750 at 125 and here as you can see what's interesting is even though we have um, two layers we're only going to use that first layer right because we have more than more than enough units in the first layer so everything is going to be costed at 7160 if I come here I have the cost at 7160 uh, for the full 870 8 uh, 8750 that's going to be give me a cost of merchandise sold of 626500 and my remaining inventory is going to be if I take the 10,000 and I subtract the 8750 it's going to leave me 1,250 costed at 7160 right as you see here for a total of 89,500 and my and my other layer the one that I purchased on March 25 is still completely there intact 2,500 at 72 so my total ending inventory should be this combination here 269,500 let's see if that's my inventory once I plug all these numbers into the T accounts and that's pretty much what I did all I did is I created some T accounts which should be representative of um, of a GL right this is like the this is like the journalizing portion and this here is like the um, posting portion right so I just simply transferred all the entries from beginning uh, to end over here and we have the four for example we see the 450 here and we see the 150 here and inventory went down by 235 I have the two purchases over here let me bring this more here so we can see it okay the two purchases over here uh, inventory uh, this is the starting inventory for 150 and uh, they purchase on the 10th for 510 so I put them all in here okay so does my ending inventory match what I have here I had 269 500 uh, what do I have in my T accounts? Two sixty nine five hundred. Sales revenue is five million one ninety one two fifty. It's going to be offset by um, accounts receivable, and cost of merchandise sold is two nine zero four five hundred. Let me take a second and compare that with the answers to the book. Cost of merchandise sold two million nine zero four five hundred is correct, at least based on what the book is telling me and accounts receivable 5191 5191250 okay and sales 
and ending inventory is 269,500. So everything here matches the answers of the book and so it was done correctly. So that's it for this exercise, FIFO. Um, in the next video, I will explain how this exact same exercise is going to be done using the LIFO system. And under the LIFO system, what you're going to notice is that sales is the same. You're, you're selling everything at the same price. What's going to change is the costing of the, of the, um, of the merchandise, right? Now it's going to be costed differently. So both ending inventory and cost of merchandise sold are going to change. Okay. So, um, I hope this video was helpful to you and, um, let's click on to the next one when you have a chance. It's going to be on LIFO and then the third one will explain weighted average cost. Okay. Thank you.